All right, welcome back to The Effect. We're gonna start talking about simulation uh, in this video, which I think is a very important tool to have in the applied statistician's work belt. Uh, so what is simulation? Simulation in the context of what we're talking about here is when we generate our own data, typically using some sort of random number generator, uh, and then we apply our methods to that data and see what the result is. So why would we do this? Well, generally we want to know whether our methods work or not. Uh, you know, I've been telling you a lot of things about what certain methods do or don't do or when they perform well and when they don't perform well. Uh, well, how would you be able to check something like that for yourself? Uh, well, you could try to write a statistical proof using the estimator that I provided to you uh, and figure out what the properties of that estimator are in mathematical terms. But that sounds very difficult. Uh, and also, uh, it's not quite as intuitive, right? I feel like when you write a proof, sometimes you can get to the answer, but unless you're really, you know, thinking math in your head as a language, uh, it can be difficult to really understand it on a gut level. Whereas running a simulation that you is something that you can do yourself and check what properties particular estimators have. Running a simulation can also be very handy uh, if you want to check when a method breaks. Uh, I've told you things like, okay, well, regression will give you the causal estimate uh, if you know, you've know controlled for all the things that get rid of emitted variable bias. Well, uh, what happens if you don't do that? How bad is the bias going to be? Is it gonna be worse or better if the variable that's not on the model is very strongly related, very weakly related, negatively related, positively related, uh, more related to the uh, treatment variable than to the outcome, more related to the outcome than the treatment variable. These are all different questions that you could ask. How bad is it when we break one of the assumptions? Simulation can help you figure that out. The other nice thing about simulation as opposed to just trying a method on some real data is that you can pick the truth uh, because you are going to be generating the data yourself. So you know what the right answer is, which is rarely a case in actual data. You know what the right answer is going to be. And so when you apply your method, you know what answer it should be giving you if it is working properly. And if you get a different answer, then you know that there is something broken about your method uh, and that whatever you give, whatever data you've given it is not a good setting to apply that particular method in. So simulation is really good to be able to start breaking things uh, in your data, maybe start with a data set that satisfies all the assumptions that a particular estimator has, things like assuming that your model is linear, uh, assuming that you know, you've controlled for everything, uh, and seeing if it works there. And if it does, then start breaking things one at a time. Maybe make one of the uh, true model P features uh, non-linear, and then see if a linear model is really wrong, or if it seems to still work okay anyway. There's a lot of cases in statistics uh, where we can break an assumption and it makes things wrong, but only by a little bit. Uh, and simulation is a really good way to ferret those cases out. There are also cases where breaking something really makes messes things up a whole really a lot and really bad and it's bad and you don't want to do it. And simulation is also a good way of finding some of those as well. Personally, I do a simulation uh, whenever I'm faced with a new method that I'm not sure how well it's going to work, or if I just want to try something out. Sometimes I get an idea for an estimator, and I don't want to do all the work of writing a proof for it, but I can try a simulation as a first, first bat and then see, you know, hey, does this seem to work or not? Something I do quite regularly. So something strange a bit about these videos on simulation is that simulation is inherently something that involves a lot of coding and programming. Uh, and these videos so far have not really done any coding or programming. I've left that to some of my other videos that do do coding. Uh, or if you want to check the textbook chapter, I go through all of the different uh, coding examples. Uh, one reason I've done that is because there are three different coding languages in the book, and I'm certainly not going to make each video three times. But in the next couple of videos, I can still talk about what simulation does and sort of how you can put one together uh, in, gen in general terms. And if you want to actually apply one to yourself, I'd recommend going to the textbook chapter, chapter 15, uh, and looking at some of the coding examples in whatever your preferred language happens to be. I hope that you'll come along for the ride. Uh, all right. Thank you very much.